Okay, we're gonna get started now. Welcome everyone. My name is Grace Finley Golden and I'm with Foothold Technology. Today's webinar is EVV and Beyond with Foothold's Gym Buds. We have a lot of information to get through today, but we'd like to answer as many questions as possible. So if you have a question at any point during the presentation, please let our speaker know by sending a chat message through the Q&A feature on your screen. I'll now turn it over to Jim. Great, Grace, thank you so much. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, super excited to be here today. It's a beautiful day here to sit down and uh, learn a little bit about uh, EVV and, and, and a little beyond. So, um, just to give a little little sort of framework to this conversation, um, we we at Foothold obviously we work and deal with a lot of EVV and, and groups and things like that, and uh, we're just in our conversations with folks, we're finding that if folks there's a lot of confusion out there and things like that. Um, we, we may not clear it all up today, but hopefully we'll get a little framework of it. And really, the goal of this is to sort of present. Uh, to you, just some some options, some sort of strategies on how to look at this um, of not just an EVV system, but really outside the agency. So, um, without further ado, I'm gonna we'll start with what EVV is. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. I think most folks I've talked to are pretty familiar with it. Uh, again, EVV standing for electronic visit verification, and uh, these are some of the key data elements. I, I, I broke it down to four little graphics here, but it's really um, uh, six data elements. The start time and end time are required. Who did the service? Who received the service? What was the service? And where was the location? So these are the key uh, EVV requirements. This all came from some of the components in the Cures Act and things like that um, to help sort of get sort of this uh, picture of the services are being done and things like that and it's really kind of evolved from there the the real the real nuance to this is that the states are actually defining a lot of these requirements and and what that means and and so one of the things that you know i i've been on a couple of discussions around evv and some of the states uh and i know some folks here might be from our pennsylvania group but um, you know, one of the, one of the examples was brought was brought up about location, right? Location of service being one of the EVV requirements. Well, well, CMS, the folks that sort of came up with this resolution or, or this this requirement, um, did not really specify too much about location. Uh, they they you know they're requiring that it's in the individual's house and things like that. But there's no like GPS requirement, there's no geolocation, all these sort of things that you might be hearing about that. However, individual states are doing that. And there, this is where some of the confusion has come into play and things like that. Um, I, I, again, it's, we could probably spend hours on this talking about it and how it goes, but really it, this is where some of those components, but even as we get a little further and, and detailed on some of these things, the states are ultimately gonna be the real definers of what this means and things like that uh, as it goes through that. Another, another example that's come into play with recently is um, we, we talked about the ability to change start times and end times, one thing. So if, if a you know, uh, direct care worker goes in and, you know, accidentally puts down one o'clock and it was they were there at 11 o'clock or what have you um you know the question becomes on what about can you change and go back and change but then of course the counter to that is um you know <laughs> what why what's sort of the point of evv then if you can backdate it so so these are some things that are being worked out now uh for data companies like ourselves at foothold here they actually present sort of a huge challenge because it's really going to impact on how that data is captured and ultimately the workflow that's released to agencies uh like yours and things like that so we monitor and watch the stuff pretty carefully to kind of see it and, and some of it we have to sort of see how it goes a little bit because you'll hear one thing and things will change and all that so and and ultimately as the slide states uh, these will be state by state, you know, sort of things and, and nuance to each one of those. So uh, we will continue to, to look at that and things like that. But again, as, as we talk further and further, you know, you'll hear requirements. People say, well, we need GPS and things like that. If that, if that requirement's coming in, that is coming from your state, things like that. So just be aware of that in that, um, if, especially if you have multi-state services, that those requirements may or may not 
be the same on each one. Um, the other, the other sort of piece that, you know, obviously there's, and just kind of closing out the location example, the other example we had heard on this was, you know, there's definitely some getting some pushback, especially for folks that are uh, do self-directed care and things like that, that they may not want to be tracked through GPS. And so that opens up a whole nother set of issues, especially as related to location. So this is just one example um, among the six that as things get defined a little more, um, it, it, those pictures will come into play. That being said, um, really EVV is, is, is about the point of service, right? Where that data is captured and things like that. And again, I don't want to spend too, too much time diving into the nuance or the specifics of EVV, but the, the real component to this or the real sort of luxury, if you will, or the nuance to this is that you can not only capture this point of service, right? Because you're capturing who did the work and who, what the service was and things like that. But this actually can lead to other areas. So um, the example I have on there is billing, but you can also look at things like outcomes and reporting and quality assurance measures and things like that. Um, a lot of data systems like ours uh, can actually do this type of work and really help sort of facilitate it all around that point of service. So again, as we look at EVV as sort of the central point, there's a lot of other components that can build up around that piece and things like that. So um, there, this leads us to sort of our second kind of point to this, which is that there's a couple different ways that you can approach this sort of challenge on here and the way to look at this system. Um, and this is sort of the crux of what we wanted to just sort of get to this because this is sort of the beyond part, right? So there are different ways that agencies can do this. A lot of how, a lot of how folks would do it and what they're going to do is going to be wide and varied across the board as every agency and every provider, you know, is and as unique as the individuals you serve. And so I say all this in that we're giving a perspective here, but that there is no quote unquote right way or wrong way. There's just different ways. And so what's going to happen or the way it's going to work for your agency, uh, maybe one way and another for agency, another way. So it really does just depend, but really what we've seen out there um, from a, from at least from a technology side of things, there's sort of two roads you can approach um, EVV and, and, and getting data out of it and which way you want to go, um, you can do it through what we work on client systems and work around the individual clients or staff system, which is obviously focused around your staffs and things like that. And so, again, there's no right or wrong to this. It's just some different approaches on, and ultimately what's going to affect this is the data that you're getting out of the system beyond that in that point of service. So it's really going to compile and work on that there as well. So there really is a, a, a pretty different ways right here. And I'm gonna spend a little time on this next slide because this is sort of the crux of it right here, um, the, the focus. So this is sort of the, the second part to that kind of conversation. Uh, if you look in the middle there, right, the, the, the key piece of EVV and there's some case notes and things like that, most data systems that do that work or capture that data are going to be able to capture that information, right? So that's, you know, things like scheduling, case notes, time with client, obviously the EVV requirements, even some training to some degree. So whether you have a client system, whether you have a staff system, things like that, most are able to do those type of things, which is a lot of what, you know, some folks want and things like that. But obviously if you go to the right there in the yellow, you're looking at more of what we're coming from a staff system. So there are companies um, that do this work, right? That track staff information and payroll and your time in and time out, staff benefits, uh, even, you know, I know it's phasing out, but they'll do some things like piecework and things like that. So there are a number, number of companies and models or data systems that actually can track that work. And so, if the focus becomes more on this side and you need the EVV, you know, the staff system may be a way to go for the way your agency is. However, on the flip side to that, you have this sort of client side approach, right? So now you're looking at things like 
an EHR, which is an electronic health record. Some folks are wanting to do meds, you know, the EMR, electronic medication administration record. So uh, we talk about things like service or treatment plans, even doing assessments and chart audits and things like that. This is all around the client side. And this is where a company like ours foothold, this is the way we approach some things. So again, can we do, we do those components plus scheduling and EVV and time and client and staff training components. They're part of the system that we do. So it's just sort of an approach of looking at this from the client perspective. There's obviously a ton of crossover, as you can see in the green between the two systems, but that beyond part is really the part that you're going to want to consider and look at of, Hey, yeah, we have to go through this. What else do we want to get out of this? Um, and as you look at things like billing and how you bill and what you bill, they're going to pull off from these as well, right? So for example, in a system like ours, you're actually doing this work EVV, this, all this service data, treatment plan data that can streamline right to a billing system like ours. So things like that. And just as an example, in addition, you have, um, you can get your, QA data right from, you know, there's some reporting components we have and things like that, that you can pull right from here from a system like ours and things like that. All that just from just the basic sort of focus or key point of, yeah, we need to get some point of service information, but then we want to streamline or get that data out of our system and things like that. And that's just, again, one approach to that, that data challenge that a lot of agencies sort of have or want to do with starting with, EVV to some degree, or in some cases, EVV is an added component to what they're doing. So, uh, you know, again, just another way to kind of look at it. So I just wanted to make sure this is kind of key to folks, because this is sort of really the, uh, the, again, we're not here to do right or wrong approaches or things like that. There's just different ways to look at it. And this is sort of my, you know, sort of looking into the crystal ball a little bit, I think most agencies over time are going to evolve into needing two of these systems, one of each, if you will, because if you think about this in the long haul, now again, if sometimes when you're a smaller agency, you'll just have to make do and things like that with one way or the other, and that's okay. Um, but as you evolve into some bigger agencies, things like that, your staff information, you, know, you think about all the changes and rules and regs around just hiring employees, right? Uh, again, and we're, we're talking about, you know, the, the Department of Labor kind of requirements and things like that. They're all going to kind of fall under this component here. Well, this, that process and those rules and regs and, and those kind of things are constantly evolving and changing, right? So they're going to continue to happen and grow and things like that. On the flip side, you're going to have the same challenge as it comes to your client information, right? So this is where, I mean, again, CMS and some of the, 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 your department of, um, you know, mental health or, or development or disability services, things like that, they're going to come in and require new rules and regs around the individuals you work with. So it, it's, it's what historically I've sort of seen over the years is that really it's ultimately going to sort of require some agencies to have quite frankly, two systems and, you know, where, what this way leans in terms of the green really, again, depends on what they want to do. But um, there, there is a lot of crossover because just kind of pulling this back into the data side of things, foothold, you know, we do the client information, all these pieces, we do scheduling and cases and things like that. You know, we, we're, we're going to be really, really good at all that stuff. However, we're not as clean or good on staff payroll and things like that. It's, it's sort of not really our strong suit, so to speak. And on the flip side, there are staff systems that are really good at all this stuff that are going to do some case notes that aren't going to do anything or do much at all. And they're not going to be very good at the client information. And so it, it really is um, sort of a, something to consider or think about as you go through this process of, hey, we got to Think about EVV, but what's what's that strategy? What's that approach we want to do of getting data outside of that? And again, you're going to hear this free agreeing theme over and over. Um, no, to right, no right or wrong, just 
a strategy, a strategic approach to doing this. So uh, again, this is a kind of a key thing to think about and really one of the big takeaways from this brief webinar on this of, hey, how do we want to attack this challenge and things like that. So this then leads to a little bit of a conundrum for a lot of agencies that says, well, we want to do things like productivity reports and, and we really actually need all of this data. How do we do it? Well, that is still very possible. It's pulling it all together. So within this, there are, there are ways you can start to pull this data together. And, and really what's, what's happened is, or what's happening in the, in, the, in the technology world is that there are these reporting engines and things like that. So this, um, for example, we, we've partnered with a company called SciSense that actually can pull or do this data um, together for you. So it can actually, um, you can actually take your client information and then down, you know, down the road here, be able to pull in your staff information and generate those kind of productivity reports and things like that that you may want. Um, and, it, and plus other information. So the, these reporting tools have become sophisticated enough and, and really quite frankly, a little easy enough to use that they can really pull in or come, you know, what we call compile the data together of these different sources. And so this is where, uh, again, there, <laughs> the, note, the note of there is no right or wrong. Again, there's no, that, that's just sort of the approach, but how you do this and, and how you actually ultimately get your data out of the system is really just up to you and the way you want to go. Um, so the reporting tools become a key sort of piece of looking at things and saying, okay, hey, our data is here, our data is compiled, we need to look at it, we need to get it out into viewable information. And that's what's really can pull it all together right now and do things like that. So the, the last, I, I'm, that's sort of the, um, the presentation. I just wanted to sort of present a little bit of that to you. This is gonna be a super uh, tight, kind of easy webinar in terms of that information, because this is where um, the, we're finding a lot of confusion with folks and things like that. If anyone has any questions on this, uh, please hit the chat button, things like that. We'd love to um, hear from you as it goes, goes through this process, because this is, um, as agencies start to go through this process and think about it, um, there's ways to really kind of handle these challenges from not just EVV, but ultimately where it goes and things like that. I, I'm gonna take a quick pause here, and I I'm, I'm just wanna touch on a couple things uh, within our system here. I just wanted to show you, not, I'm not trying to quote unquote sell our system, but I just wanted to show you like what that looks like and where that data goes and things like that. So. Um, I will wait for questions there. Maybe not. <laughs> um, so I'm going to slide this in here. So this is our, our site and things like that. There's a lot in here, but I just really want to concentrate on this um, component right here when we go into progress notes this is where we get into um, the component of like EVV right so this is again we don't have the GPS component to here but here's where you're talking about your service type your location your start time your end time who did the service the system already knows and who the service is for the system already knows. So this ties all that together and obviously the type of service and things like that. But this screen right here is where you're capturing EVV. In our system, this data, again, there's a ton of workflows around this and all that. We're not gonna do a demonstration today. We're happy to do it and I'll, I'll leave my email up if you wanna reach out to us. But this is where this data then can flow to things like billing, outcomes, reporting, things like that all from just capturing that data right here. So we want to keep it simple, clean, and easy. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the SciSense component, this is where you're going to capture the data um, within the system right here. So you get into, like, here's our employment. So this is where you're going to go into your dashboarding and things like that um, 
oops, I apologize about that. I meant to hit the documentation management piece here. Um, but these are some different dashboards. So again, we're looking at notes written and things like that. I don't have a ton of like billing information tied to it, but this is where you're kind of getting, hey, all this data has just pulled up from or through like that kind of key screen and things like that. So you can see who's doing notes and things like that. And I, I could, or we could ultimately tie billing information to this and some more staff information to this, things like that, just to kind of give a little more detail or depth to um, the data that's coming in. So again, this, see, <laughs> this gets into a long sort of process of uh, demonstration and conversation, things like that. But that's sort of the key piece to um, what we just wanted to present today. We just wanted to show you a little tidbit on how that kind of worked and how you ultimately, from that key point of screen or that key point of service screen, rather, you can actually dive in or dig out, depending on how you want to look at it, this data right here. And again, we come at it from one approach of that client focus record, things like that. So we talk about things more like employment, referral activity all, all around the individual. But on the flip side, again, there's different ways you can kind of look at this and go through this process right here. So um, just wanted to um, present that here. I don't know if anyone has it. That's really, um, we're going to keep it short today. This is, a, this is a quick webinar. We wanted to give some folks a little sense of what we had there. Um, and but more importantly, just sort of present some of these key pieces right here. I'm going to go back to the very first screen here. I'm sorry for the quick flip here. But if anyone does have any questions, um, feel free to, to I'll, I'll stay on the chat here for a few minutes. Um, in addition, my email is up there now. You can you can email us with any questions of things you might be interested in looking at as well. Um, we're happy to talk about this, but we just wanted to, um, we thought this might be helpful to some folks and it looks like by the attendees it is there's some folks out there that are interested in terms of how to look at this and 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 sort of that approach of hey we know we have to go through evv which way is a good way to do it and, and some different components on there